Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 97, we're going to continue our journey of architecture roadmaps and take a look at the first model, which is the iteration model. In lesson 96, if you didn't already see that, please watch that first. Oh, we took a look at the structure of a roadmap. And a roadmap consists really of those three models. The first is that iteration model, which produces projects. Those projects get fed into a portfolio model which then really qualifies and documents and sizes all of those projects. From there, those get fed into a prioritization model, which then prioritizes projects based on sizing, need, budget, and finally creates the consolidated view. As we saw in Lesson 96, all of these models work as cogs in a synergistic way so that if any of these cogs change, the other models have to change as well, which makes it challenging to keep an architectural roadmap in sync. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at the iteration model, the very first model that lays really the foundational aspects of our roadmap. And the iteration model really graphically describes the iterations or the steps necessary for that specific type of transformation or initiative. And for example, in the iteration model, we may start with a current state. And we may then show different iterations and diagram visually and graphically what the transformation looks like on various stages. And now what I'm showing here really is the architecture and technology transformation. But we would also have an iteration, iteration model for the business workflow changes or even the organizational change. Now, three main tips, regardless of the type of dimension we're creating the roadmap for, whether it be architecture and technology, whether it be for business workflow or even for the organizational change. Three tips. First of all, iterations should be as small as possible to be able to reduce risk. This is one of the kind of the art of granularity of a particular iteration because each iteration really forms an opportunity to commu communicate to major stakeholders the overall progress. And the other art of kind of the iteration model is that they should be small enough to be able to reduce risk. However, they should be able to provide some business value that we can demonstrate and then communicate. And so this is really the art of the granularity of iterations. It's actually rather challenging in order to come up with the right level of risk plus business value. Now, there are some iterations that I do have a lesson for, as a matter of fact, called staging iterations. A staging iteration is an iteration that's necessary to, and I call it staging iteration, to set the stage, so to speak, for future iterations. Uh, establishing, for example, a messaging infrastructure. Maybe that's required in order to move forward. There's really no business value in it, which is why those are called staging iterations. The real goal here on that iteration model is to really try to minimize those staging iterations, um, trying to keep that staging within another iteration to be able to show the business value at the end of each of those. The point is, regardless of the dimension, uh, these iterations really generate projects. In order to go from, for example, the current state to iteration one, these four projects have to happen in these various systems. And so those are the projects that usually get assigned an application development team or an application architect to be able to figure out how you're actually going to reroute a line of communication from one system over to another, or to be able to transform contracts or add in uh, some sort of component in the middle of all this. And so uh, these are all the various projects. Now, the iteration model really, like I said, forms the backbone of the architecture roadmap. Within each segment, and don't forget the segments generally run horizontally, they don't have to, or I'm sorry, vertically, <laughs> but they don't have to. But basically those segments can represent um, usually systems, like for example, in an architectural and technology transformation, those segments would represent maybe systems or applications or major services. 
Uh, they could represent divisions or departments as well, but horizontally uh, running here are all the various iterations. Now you can flip these around if you want to. There's nothing that states that segments have to be vertical and iterations horizontal. This is just usually uh, the way that I diagram them. Uh, but now, once we have our iterations, those are the steps involved, step one, two, three. And by the way, I have sh shown here iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. It's really, I would strongly advise also to name the iterations. So instead of saying, oh, coming up is iteration four, uh, we have a name for it so that it makes sense of exactly what's being transformed. And within each of these iterations, that's where we specify the projects within each segment or within each application and the corresponding dependencies of those projects. Now, at this point, all I'm specifying in the iteration model is that these are the steps for my plan and that these are the corresponding projects, the things that need to happen and the corresponding dependencies of those. What I don't know yet, how big are these projects? What's the sizing? Do we have the money? Do we have the staff? Um, that's going to be next up when we take a look at the portfolio model in the next lesson. So, so for some resources, you can go to um, the latest book that I wrote with Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, um, and that we just published in February 2020. A uh, great book for all, really looking at the, all the dimensions of software architecture, really including the technical as well as the soft skills. Uh, my website, developer2architect.com, has lots of great resources for you in terms of uh, lessons, these lessons here which are free, um, articles, books, videos. Uh, Neil Ford and I have a monthly architecture Q&A forum that's free that you can sign up for. Um, also, uh, about me, if you want to find out uh, books I've written, uh, articles, and videos, and also just my reading list of, of off-topic technology things I like, you can go into the About Me section. And I also do uh, both public and private training classes as well, which you can look at in the Training tab. Um, so this has been Lesson 97, Architecture Roadmaps, the Iteration Model. Um, in our next Lesson 98, we'll take a look at that Portfolio Model, which is a very interesting model. I do a different take on that that you'll, I think, be surprised at. So in two weeks, you can actually view that one. In the meantime, please stay safe. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye.